Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to be starting on the first of two albums in the B size, basically amazing printable scrapbook album templates. This is the prototype flip through of the type of album that we're going to be making first. So this is the size, and if you want to see the flip through of this um, album, there is a video where I did a flip through of all four sizes, A, B, C, and D, and I will link that video up there and in the description box below. So you can get a general idea of where we're going with this uh, album if you would like, but we're not going to be following that those these pages exactly. But there will be a playlist for this album that we're getting ready to start today. And the first video on that playlist will be the introduction to the printable templates, basically amazing printable scrapbook album templates. That will be the first video. That will be the flip through video. And then um, so on and so forth from there. And it will, the first video we're going to do today is we're going to do the covers. And I'm doing the covers and the binding, another video on the covers and the binding because I'm going to do the spine a little bit different this time. So I wanted to go ahead and share that process with you. So these templates are available in my Etsy shop. I have them linked down below. They come in all different types of background designs. The templates are the same. They just have a different background design on them. All of the background designs have a free set of the plain templates and the guide. So those do not come separately. But the background design that we're going to be using in this album is the Vintage Loose Leaf, which is this one here. But we're only going to be using it just a little bit. So if you didn't want to purchase this uh, specifically for this album, then that is totally fine. You can totally substitute something else. But I believe that this set of background, you know, this set of templates with this background on it is going to be extremely useful. So this album I'm calling Pastel Florals because I am using two printable collections from Amity Bloom. I have that link down below if you want to check them out. Um, one of them is called Floral Collage and the other one is called Pastel Ornaments. So this one's Floral Collage, this one's Pastel Ornaments. And there are four backgrounds in each one. So when I made the prototype, I only used this set of backgrounds and then I added some printable um, colors from my, I think it was muted backgrounds for this one. So I did have to supplement quite a bit because there was only four backgrounds, but, or four uh, printable designs. But this set, if you add this set into it, is additional four more printable designs. So I didn't have to add any sort of um, shades of color or muted backgrounds or anything like that. So we're just gonna be using these two plus the Vintage loose leaf and of course some um, uh, coffee and tea stained paper. If you didn't want to coffee and tea stain your own paper, I have a link down below to uh, Etsy shops that do sell those. So if you would like to purchase it versus um, do it yourself, check that link out below. There's tons of sellers on there and they'll be happy to do that for you. Okay, so let's talk about the album that we're getting ready to start, we are not going to be putting any pockets or envelopes or anything in it. It's just straight going to be pages. They're going to be different size pages, but they're going to be pages and it's going to be repetition. So that's why this album's going to go super, super, super fast. But I was inspired completely. This whole set of templates was inspired by my mom and my dad's uh, scrapbook albums that they kept. And I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you theirs really quick. So I just grabbed two out of the dozens and dozens that I uh, have been going through lately. <laughs> um, I just grabbed two really quick. And, you know, this is how they used to, you know, used to keep their memories, right? So, and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's cool. You know, the black paper and then you've got the photo corners and then, you know, the pretty pictures and all of that. Everything's very vintage, very cool. I like it a lot. So... Also, the album we're getting ready to start, you could, instead of doing white cardstock, you could use black cardstock and do it the exact same way. Maybe I'll do a little mock-up page of that just so you can see the difference. Um, but, you know, they, this is, and, and I just want you guys to know, if I start sneezing, it's because I'm allergic to <laughs> all things old, it seems like. Um, just flipping through there, I can feel my throat <laughs> closing up a little bit. Um... But anyway, so everything is fine. I will tell you though, if you use four photo corners, the, the photos stay down better than if you only use two. Um, I noticed that quite a bit throughout these albums. 
So I think this this album, see they started coming off too after a while, but th these weren't kept in a very good spot, unfortunately. But this is one way they kept, you know, their scrapbooks, their memories. You can see a lot of pictures are gone or fallen out or whatever. And so this worked just fine. So, so let me show you another version. So this one, it's like more of a cream or craft color and then black photo corners. Um, and this is a really pretty look as well. Very vintage, very awesome looking. And these are great. Look at these old photos. This is my grandma and grandpa. What does that say? Oh, it's got the, uh, it's got the uh, photographer's embossed name on the bottom there. Um, but anyway, so this is a great photo album. Everything looks great. You know, you're flipping through. You can see where the corners are starting to lift up a little bit. And then, bam pictures start sticking together, right? So once this happens, there's really not a whole lot that can be done. I'm, I don't think you're going to be able to salvage too much because it'll just pull away, you know, pull away the, um, the surface area. So being inspired by this whole set of temples has been inspired by their scrapbooks, taking it back to the basics, you know, starting from the beginning, you know, how to create you know, your masterpiece, your amazing memories, your amazing book of memories. That's probably what I should have called it, your amazing book of memories. <laughs> um, so that's kind of where this whole thing started. So this album in particular, I'm going to show you how to help prevent those pictures from sticking together. So therefore, I'm going to show you how to add this protective sheet in between each page. So we're going to construct the albums, we're going to make the covers, we're going to add the binding, we're going to add the pages, we're going to mat the pages, we're going to add these faux, um, these faux photos. This is actually supposed to be like a four by six photo. So we're going to add those and everything. And then I'm going to show you how to add the paper in. And it's super easy. You can do it to any album, any scrapbook. Like see here is an example of what we're not going to be doing in this album. We're not going to be doing any envelopes. Um, we're going to do another B-sized album that we are going to go all out and do all the envelopes. I did a video, the last video I did, I'll link it up here and down below, where I did, uh, I showed you what uh, products I'm going to be using if you are interested um, to see what, what's coming, what's coming up next. See, there's the Amity Bloom, um, the Amity Bloom papers. So anyway... So that's kind of what this album is about. So since it's a lot of repetition, um, I'm doing a lot of work off camera and I'm just going to be doing a little bit on camera with you guys. So all of that being said, <laughs> let's get started. From the templates, what I've already cut these out, but I wanted to show you anyway. Um, the cover for the B sized album is on page 2B. So I took this and I traced it onto medium weight chipboard. Now mine happens to have a white side, but that's because I've ran out of my chipboard. I have a Amazon list specifically for this pastel florals album and the, the exact chipboard that I use is linked in there. So that is down below if you want to check that out. Um, so I just simply traced around the edge or traced around the edge of my template and this is the mat for it, by the way, and cut them out. So I got two of those. So that's 2B. And then the, uh, the spine, I'm going to use the two page spine, which is on page five. So I traced that out onto my chipboard as well and cut that out. This is my workbook for this set of templates. You do not get an actual physical item. It is a digital download only, um, but I do have a whole playlist on how I make my workbooks. I've made them different um, over the years, but the last one that I made on camera is exactly how I made this one. So if you want to check that out, I will link that playlist up here and down below in the description box as well. Okay, let me see. Do I need anything else? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me think. I've got things marked, so those were the covers. I think that might be it for now. So now we have these three pieces. So the reason I'm going ahead and doing another video on these covers is because I'm going to use fabric instead of Tyvek. We've used the Tyvek, which is the, which is this, the, um, no, that's not it. Where's my Tyvek? 
So this is like an example of Tyvek. It's like you can't tear it, you can't rip it. It's what they make security envelopes and things out of. Um, they wrap buildings with it, I think. I don't know. But a lot of people cannot get their hands on these. This form, this material. So that we use this a lot for the, you know, the, the assembly of the front and back cover and the spine piece. So instead of the Tyvek, we are going to be using fabric. And this is uh, unbuffered, I think is what it's called, muslin or something like that. No, it could be unbleached muslin fabric. Um, so we're going to be using fabric instead of the Tyvek, just so I can show you that it works the same way. So if you can't get a hold of the Tyvek, you can just use fabric. Okay, so I've already cut this down to be a four-inch strip wide. I don't know how long it is. Um, I might, it might just—I just kind of guessed. So it's about 24 inches long. I don't think I need that much, but that is the piece that I have. So what my thought was is I would attach the spine here and then my covers and then I would wrap it around like this and cut off the excess where I needed. So that is what we're going to be doing. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to attach the, I'm trying to figure out where I want my seam to be. I probably should have it down towards the bottom. So I'm going to attach this piece here to the fabric first. And I am going to be using Fabri-Tac by Beacon. This is a great glue. Um, you could use a Fabri-Fix. It's pretty much the same thing. So any glue that's meant for fabric you can use. Um, I've I tried other glues like um, like white glues and it really seeps through the fabric quite a bit and it's kind of nasty so it, it, we're going to be covering it up anyway but still I want a smooth smoother surface so I covered the whole thing and then I'm going to take a second and just kind of smooth this out like this and then I'm going to find the middle here and I'm going to attach it down like this, and I'm going to press. I'm going to wipe my finger off real quick. So then I'm going to flip it this way and take my bone folder and press. So because I smoothed it out just a little bit, you're not going to see a whole lot of seepage through the fabric. Okay. Okay. So I've got that on. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our front and back covers. And I think, I think the easiest way to accomplish this is to add it to the chipboard, the glue to the chipboard, and then maybe a thin line on the fabric. So I am going to just add that thin line first on the fabric. Because the fabric tech does take a minute to dry. So you got time. Okay, and then it was about a half an inch to five eighths of an inch on the edge here. This will probably be the easiest album you could ever make. It just will take you a little bit of time. So I'm going to leave myself about a quarter of an inch. And I normally don't leave myself that much. But I feel like I might need the extra room with this one. The extra little bit, the little give, I think I might need that. So... <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and give myself that extra space. So see this, can you see the quarter of an inch there? All right. All right, and we're going to burnish that in really good. Then we're going to do the same thing to this side. All 
Oh, you can even still see. I didn't even cut directly on my pencil lines. You can still see my pencil lines. Whoopsie. But little things like that are not going to make that big of a difference in the overall finished album. Love, if you're off just a hair, if you're off by an eighth of an inch, all of that, it does not matter. It will not affect your album. Not like you think it would, anyway. <laughs> right, let's burnish that down. I got a little, a little outside of my area there, but that's totally fine. So... Now what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut it. I'm going to trim it. So this is going to be coming up like this. I'm going to overlap it, I think, a hair just a little bit. So I'm going to trim this a little bit off. All right, so I'm going to start here in this bottom piece. And I'm really going to be generous with this glue. Um, let's see. It's easier to actually go on the chipboard, so I'm going to mark it. And do it that way so I can get really good coverage. And I am going to go inside the, the ditch there that we created. Sure, I've got good coverage because I'm not squeezing really hard. I know it might look like I am, but I'm not squeezing hard. I'm just trying to spread that glue out as best as I can. I got a rag to the side of me that I'm wiping that on just in case you're curious. So, all right, I'm gonna. I'm going to put that down like that. Make sure that this is good and adhered on that edge there. I'm going to flip it this way. And I am going to burnish the fabric to each other. All right. And we're just going to keep working it until it is good and stuck. All right, so now I'm going to flip this back over and we're going to do this piece. You're going to add this piece in. So let's just go ahead and start adding glue. All right, so the um, the fabric has now taken the place of the tie back, and now that I'm getting glue all over the place, and we now have our covers constructed, right? So now we just need to cover all the covers. Cover all the covers. <laughs> now we just need to cover the. Now we need to cover the covers with paper. All right, so in order to cover these covers with paper, these are. This is a. What is this? 14 by 17? No, what is this? 11 by 17. These, this is 11 by 17, just regular copy paper that I have coffee and tea stained. So again, it's 11 by 17. I do have this linked in my Amazon if you want to check it out. Because um, you don't have to print on it, per se, unless you want to. I guess you could if you want to. But I purchased this a long time ago when I started working on these size albums because they're so big and I love coffee stain paper so I needed to find you know a way to have large sheets of coffee stain paper now if you don't have a uh, coffee stain paper and you're using cardstock um, use 12 by 12 12 by 12 will be just fine um, and you'll just have to piece it together a certain way you'll just have to piece it together a little bit differently than the way I'm gonna piece mine together but what I'm planning on doing is I've got several pieces here I need to make sure that they kind of go together let me move this one aside so I think right this second, I only need two. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to have to turn it this way. 
and do the edges like this because the covers are too tall to do it the other way. We can't really wrap the edges and I like to wrap my edges. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut this to 12. I'm going to cut it down to 12 inches. I'm going to cut both of them to 12 actually. So I need two pieces. Let me open this up. This is a Fiskars. Oh, you can see that glare from my still working on my lighting situation. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to do that, but we're working on it. We'll see. Let me... So I'm going to cut these both at the same time just really quick. And I'm going to cut them again at 12. So I'm cutting on the 17 inch side. I'm cutting it down to 12. So it'll be 11 by 12 is what it'll end up being. And I think I got my measurements correct. We shall find out. <laughs> so then one of these pieces, I'm gonna flip it this way. We'll go here. Yeah, I think. And I'm gonna go ahead and let it go all the way over onto this other side of this other, this other cover. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, or I could, I could piece these two together really quick. Let's see. There's not a really good way to piece these together. Um, could piece them together and treat this as like a whole piece. What do we think? I think I'll do it that way. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to overlap. I'm going to overlap quite a bit. I'm going to get my one in. Oh, you guys. Hang on. Let me, uh, let me, let me cover up somebody's name really quick. This lovely, lovely person, Pat, sent me something a long time ago, and I was, I've been going through all my stuff because I've been re, we're going to make a spade, a room for the baby, so I'm trying to rearrange a bunch of stuff, so I found some mail that I've gotten <laughs> that I had put in piles to say and to say thank you, and it got shoved to the side. So she made me this nifty little tool. Let me see what her letter says here. She's working on her crafty companions. Um, I made a tool to help me cut my score tape. And she made one for me also. It's made from like a cling wrap uh, box edge and it works great. It can also be used to tear paper for distress edges, for a distress, distress edge look. Enjoy Pat. So Pat, thank you so much. I'm going to, look, she even used my paper. <laughs> I'm gonna use it today. I am going to use it today. So I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the opportunity. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do here, I haven't used it yet. I think we're going to use this one inch score tape or you could use, well, there's that end is not free and clear of debris. Or you could use several strips of your 3 8 inch or if you wanted to use even bigger if you want to overlap even bigger but I'm just going to use this one inch and I'm going to run it down the edge you could use liquid glue too if you want but I would advise if you're using thin paper and you want it to have a smooth surface cover then you should you, you should cover the entire surface with adhesive so I almost grabbed my scissors but I think this is the way it works so you put it on there like that and then you tear. Perfect! It is perfect! Thank you, Pat. This is so, so awesome. I am so glad I came across it again because I wanted to share with you. So yeah, I'm super excited about this little tool. Thank you, Pat. I just need to be careful not to rip my skin open. So I'm gonna stick that up there in my, with my tape. I'm super excited. All right, so I'm going to burnish this down and remove the backing. And I am going to add, 
I am going to add some, am I going to add some liquid glue? No, I don't think I will. Because we're going to be covering over top of this as well. Now, I just need to be super careful. I will use my glue stick trick so that I can get this straight. I just got to find my glue stick. This is just regular Hobby Lobby, nothing fancy, Paper Studio whoop, glue stick so that I can get this stuck down straight. Wait, don't. And so now I can just lay this on here, match up those edges, about an inch overlap. Ooh. And see, coffee stain pa paper, I didn't iron this, and it's, so it's naturally like wavy, wiggly. So I need, I need it to be stuck down as firmly as possible onto my covers. Oops, that's some leftover glue from my, <laughs> from my bone booger. All right. So now we have a full sheet. And you can do this with your uh, 12 by 12 cardstock as well. And so it's going to go like this. Didn't really want that seam in the middle, but I think it'll be okay. Once we ink everything up, I think it'll be just fine. So I actually kind of need to make sure that it's over just a little bit. So now I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to add tape to the whole backside of here and move that piece aside. I'm going to add specific tape into the gutter here, the little ditch. I think I'm going to use, I think quarter of an inch will fit in there. Yep. So I'm going to use this quarter of an inch tape in this part here because I definitely want, definitely want the paper to stick. To every nook and cranny, I might have to use liquid glue on the fabric as well. So I'm going to burnish that in really quick. All right, and then I'm going to put, I can do a one inch. Let's see, can I do a one inch? doesn't quite cover it. I don't have a half an inch. Or can I do several strips of this? Well, let's just do the one inch. Let me get my tool back out. So this is one inch <laughs> tape. Grab that little tool, that fancy little tool. I love this. I love it. I wish I wouldn't have lost it. Okay. Run one strip and then I'm going to have to run another strip of something. This is three eighths of an inch. Go right on that edge there. And then we've got just a little smidge. Let's take this, this part off, this backing, and let's put a quarter of an inch there, right up next to the one inch, and then we'll put the backing back. We just wanna make sure we get that whole thing covered. Let's put this backing back before I burnish anything down. Right. Okay, so now I want to do, I want to cover the rest of this, but I'm going to use my big rolls. You guys might remember these from the Crafty Companion, my workstations. Um, I'm going to use these big rolls to cover the remainder of this. It's just going to be faster or, or I have sheets. I have sheets. Will that be better? 
So, no, I'm not going to use my rolls. I'm going to use these sheets. That'll be easier. So, I'll have these linked down below to, this is the scrapbook.com sheets of uh, adhesive. So, I'll have it linked down below if you want to check it out. So, I'm going to need two for sure. And I'm also going to need, I'm going to need my craft mat. And let's see, how do I want to do this? I forget what's the easiest way to take this off its backing. This way? Yes. I'm going to take the whole sheet off, I think. All right. So I'm going to. I'm going to line this up on this edge. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get set it here. I did pretty good. Before I stick it down to any surface, <laughs> like I just did, <laughs> I'm going to cut the excess off and I'm going to try to save some of it. So we could probably use it for something else. There's one piece. This is a Scotch craft knife. I like it because you can snip off the edges, the end there, so you can have a new blade easily. So there's one. Let me burnish that down. And let's do the other. See how simple that is? I don't think these are expensive. I don't know how many sheets you get. You get five to a, to a pack. I don't think they're very expensive. But I, I'm not 100% sure. But you could, again, just use liquid glue if you would like. Okay, then let's match this up to the edge. I can't see. Match that up to that edge. Whoop, sorry. <laughs> and then let's trim off the excess. Let's burnish that one down. Which one was it? Was it this one? Let's burnish it all just really quick. I'm going to remove, let me get my piece over here. I'm just going to remove this center tape, not the ones that are in the ditch there, just the center tape. And we're going to burnish that down really good before we move on is what I'm going to do. Yep, yep. And then we'll just take it a little bit at a time. So let's remove the backing. I thought about adding some liquid glue. I think I'll add liquid glue in the ditch there, but I don't think I'm going to add it on this outside piece. Um, because this all is going to be covered again. I think it'll be fine just with the strong double-sided adhesive. So I'm just going to gently place this. Whoa, don't stop shaking. Place this on here. Like this. And I'm going to flip that over. And we're going to burnish that down really good. Yep. Really, 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 really good. All right, so then. We're going to pull this up, and you see where the ditch is now exposed. I get my fiber attack ready. We're just going to remove the one backing, the tape backing in that little ditch there. We're going to put some fiber attack in there. Make 
sure we get a nice good make sure I didn't get any on the backing there and then I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to gently start working this in like this. Put it this way. Do it this way. Just want to make really good contact. All right, now I'm going to remove the backing off of this side. I think I'm going to do it like this bone photo behind me or behind the paper here and I'm just gonna try to make sure it gets laid down as flat as possible now we just need to do the other the exact same way Right now, that is all good and attached. And see, like we can make this the since you can see this little seam right here, we can make this the back cover so we can have it actually facing the other way. I do like to kind of work my paper before everything is super dry in all the directions. Okay, all right, now we are going to wrap our edges. All right, so because this is just paper and not cardstock, I'm gonna actually burnish, or not burnish, but um, what's this called? I'm going to score the paper all the way around the edges. I mean, if it was cardstock, you may want it to be a little bit more precise. But since this is just paper, I think we can manipulate it pretty easily. So I'm just going to, like, I prepped it just a little bit to kind of get it going in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it all the way over, all the way around all these edges. Whoops, see, I got off a little bit. Do this. Oops, I did it again. And then this this is such a big cover. <laughs> then I'm gonna fold this piece over, and we're gonna do it like this. And the same for this end piece. All right. Now I'm gonna add tape. I might even shorten this up a little bit. Um, I may trim them off just a little bit because they are pretty long. We don't need that much. So I'm going to take about half of these two end pieces off. Like a bite. And now we're going to add tape. Do I have enough room for one inch? No. So I'm going to put tape in two places. I'm going to run tape along the edge of the covers. And then along the edge of the paper. But notice I am making sure it gets in there. In fact, I'll do that just real quick. And then I'm not going to go edge to edge on the paper because we're going to be cutting those corners. So we're just going to go like this. 
You could use liquid glue too if you didn't want to use the tape. So I'm going to go around and do all the edges like that. All right, now that that's done, now we can cut off the corners. Now you could use, I have the Perfect Trim ruler that was, um, that can be used that you line it up and then you cut the corner off. You can use that, but not everybody has that. So you can just literally just take your scissors and since we folded it this way and this way, there's kind of an X there. And you can just cut straight across that X. So when you fold it over, there's not that much uh, overlap. But if there is, if you think there's going to be too much, then just go a little bit further. But since this is just paper, we can manipulate that corner way easier than we can cardstock. So let's just go ahead and do all of these corners. Depends on how picky you are about everything, whether or not you need the perfect trim ruler, which is a great tool and I love using it. I love using it. When I used to do custom work, that's, that's exactly what I used because I wanted it to be perfect. All right, but I do want to, now there's some glitter, there's, um, that'll cover it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this long edge so I'm going to take the backing off of that edge there, and the backing off of here, like that. And I am going to put a little bit of liquid glue around this fabric area. Actually, I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it down the whole length along the edge of the chipboard. I really want to make sure that that sticks down to that edge as well. But I am going to put some more right there on the fabric. So in order to get a good edge, I'm going to tip this up on its side and kind of do this number. And then I'm going to fold it over like this. For the most part, it should have caught. Let's start with this part here. Burnish that down. I've got a glob of glue or something right there. Burnish that down, and then I'm going to run my bone photo along the edge, the top edge there. Okay, so that's done. That's attached. Do the same thing over here. And then let's do the ends. One thing you do want to do if you did hand cut it yourself, you want to kind of tuck those ends around that corner of that chipboard. And it's no big deal because it's, it's just paper. You should be able to do it, no problemo. All right, to finish off the inside piece here, I took a piece from the pages we cut down for the covers, and I cut it down to four and a half inches wide, I think, and about the cover height. So four and a half by 10, maybe. So we're gonna cover up that fabric like this. So we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to add tape down in this little ditch. So just like the outside, we're going to do the same thing to the inside. And then I'm going to take my 3 eighths or 
will it, how about an inch? Will an inch be too much? No, an inch should be perfect. So I'm going to take my one inch on either side there. So then on this paper, we are going to go around the edges. We're just literally just going to simply go around all four edges. Top and bottom, we're going to do first. We're going to put a tape on first because we're going to leave that to last to take off. So now we're going to remove the back. Just to the inside pieces, we're going to leave those two one inch on the other side, on either side, and we're going to leave the tape. Oops. And we're going to leave the tape on the paper, or the backing on the paper, I mean. And I'm going to add the liquid glue again to this. Let it come down. So this is what you do when you want to make sure that if you think your pages are going to be super, super heavy and you don't want them to pull away, you double do everything like this. You just, you add your double-sided adhesive and then you add your liquid glue and you will be good to go. All right, I'm going to try to judge exactly where I should be here. I think that's right. If it's not right, it's good enough. Am I right? First, I'm going to work on burnishing that. It's a little crooked, but I don't mind. All right. So then I'm going to take the backing off of... Whoops, I shouldn't have gone all the way up. That's okay. I'm backing off of this. And then backing off of the edge there. And burnish it down. Do the same thing over here. So then you need to come back and get the two top and bottom pieces of tape. Uh, the backing off there. And furnish that in. So here are the basic covers for the size B album. Now we're going to do, we're going to add the binding strips onto the spine and then that's all we're going to do in this video okay so back in the templates we are going to grab the binding strips so this is page six so this is what a full page of binding strips looks like now when you print off your plane or your background design whatever you're using it's not going to have any of this writing or color on it so that's what this is so this is left over from the last book that we made because we used these first two but we're going to use the rest of this actually we're going to use all of it so we're going to basically use this next set of binding strips, this next portion, just like we would if we were just doing a two page. So we're going to use it that way. And then we're going to do all of these add on pieces. So I am going to use those pieces versus printing off another set. Now I think I'm going to score these before I cut these apart. So this is a We Are Memory Keepers scoreboard. And let's see. So you've got this area here, and then you've got these two small areas, and then you've got this big area. So I'm going to score right next to each big area on this first set. 
just like that. Right, and then I'm gonna scoot over to this next set. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, score on both sides of this big piece, of the big section, I mean, not big piece. <laughs> Just like that. And then on this last bit, I'm gonna score right, right there on that line, the last line, or the last, uh, right next to that big section. <laughs> I can't think of what to call it. It's driving me nuts. All right. Now you get me a paper trimmer out again. So then I'm going to cut, I'm going to trim this extra edge away here that we have. It's just a blank space between. So again, this first section we're going to keep together, even though there's a line down the middle, we can just use that as a guide. So we're going to keep this first section together. Then there's another space, a little spacer. We're going to cut that apart. And then we're going to cut down the middle of this one. So now we have a section that looks like this. And then we have this left over. So I just need to literally cut out that spacer that's there. I need to cut that out. Oh, this one's gonna be tough because it's so tiny. Okay. So you should have four pieces after we trim all that apart. Looks like that. So this first piece, let's go ahead and prep it. We're gonna prep it one way and then prep it the other. We just want it to be flexible. Prep it one way and then flip it back. Prep it the other. So you have that. And then on all of these pieces, you wanna do the same thing. But before we put any tape on these, we are gonna ink them up because they will be visible. So I'm gonna ink the, I know they're already inked up um, on one side, but you wanna go to the other side and you wanna ink all of those edges, not all of them. But you wanna get these because they might show. And then you wanna get the top and bottom. Boop, boop, right? So let's go ahead and start putting some tape. I'm gonna use the 3 8 and a quarter, I think. You don't wanna go past, or no, maybe I'll just use two quarters. You don't wanna go past your score line. You wanna butt right up next to it. And you wanna go end to end. So this is a quarter of an inch tape. You guys, I got nervous a few videos ago. I thought I hadn't been recording. I thought I had turned my camera off or on or something. I don't know, but I freaked out because I had done recorded a whole bunch. So I keep checking to make sure I'm recording. I mean, I did, I had it on, but I thought I hadn't had it on. I don't know, it was ridiculous. I couldn't remember which, what, what I couldn't remember what I did. <laughs> but either way, it did work out. It worked out just fine. All right. Got that down, and then on these, these are a little bit trickier because it's a super tiny little strip. But same thing, we're gonna go right up to the edge of that score. And with these, we might have to tuck some of the adhesive um, back on itself. Let's open our covers up. And so this one is gonna go right smack in the middle, like so. So let's remove this tape. And I might use, thinking about using a liquid glue here. Not the Fabri-Tac, but the art glitter glue. 
Um, I think I'm going to use this to make sure. Oh, I have the big bottle. Let me, I don't want to use the big bottle. I haven't cleaned it out yet. Believe it or not, I know. Let's use this bottle. This is the same thing, or glitter glue. It's just a skinnier bottle, a smaller bottle, or whatever. So I am, I'm just going to run a little bit down the edge here, or down the middle, and then I'm going to like smooth it out. We just want to make sure, for all of those people who are worried about these things coming off, let's just make sure. Make sure we didn't get the glue on the wrong part. We're going to, we're double doing it here. Double duty. <laughs> Well, so I'm going to lay this back on here, and again, I'm going to try to go right in the middle without shaking too bad. It should be just perfect. I'm going to burnish it like this with the fin, because I want to make sure that I'm not gluing the fin down accidentally. Right. So there's two fins that are in. Like a bit. Then let's take one of these smaller pieces. And I'm just going to try to wrap that little bit of extra back over on itself. Just fine. Take a little bit of Glue. Smooth it out just a bit. So then this one, this is an add-on fin, and I think actually we're gonna put it this way. So I'm gonna lay it right on top of the center here, and I'm gonna butt it right up next to that score mark of the main one that we've already pressed down. So now we have three fins. Now, if you wanted to use a different type of binding, feel free. Feel free to go ahead and do that. Um, I just wanted to show you guys a way that you can add fins even after the fact. Like if you just did a two page binding and you were working and you decided I need more pages, you can add them in just like this. But I wanted more pages than just the two. Um, because there, there's not going to be a lot of interactive elements. It's just going to be pages with photo mats. So, so there we got that. And then let's do another one. Take off the backing. Oops, this one does have a little bit of overlap. Or I mean, the overhang, not overlap. Sometimes you can use that to your advantage when there's a little bit. Okay, a little bit of glue. So then we're going to take this one, we're going to butt it right up next to the one we've already put down, the main one. We're going to butt that right up next to it and try to match it up top and bottom. Press it down, right? So now we have four fins. And see, since I added that liquid glue, it's gonna take a minute for it to, to grab. So we've got four fins, right? Easy, easy. And then one last one. I would suggest that you, I'm not even, oh yes, I better. I would suggest that before you start adding pages that you let your fins, your spine area, get really good and dry. You don't want to, the weight of any pages to pull it off before it's completely dry. All right, and then I'm gonna flip this around this way to get a better look. And I'm going to bet it right up next to that center one. And perfect. 
voila put this way burnish it that away so now we have five fins we've got one smack in the middle and then two on either side of that middle one so now we've got five fins to where we can add pages to do you see that you see all five fins there yeah perfect okay you guys we are going to stop there so we got the base of the the basic covers finished and we added the binding strips or the binding fins into the inside and in the next video we'll start adding pages so be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like the video let me know what you think about the Basically Amazing uh, album series so far. Uh, all the ones that we've made. We've made a D, we've made a C, and now we're making a B. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I upload a video, especially in when I'm doing these series so you don't miss a step. But again, if you do miss a step, there's a playlist specifically for this exact album and it's called Pastel Florals and it is listed or linked down below in the description box of this video. All right, you guys, I will see you next time. Bye.